Alright uh, people, I'm back again with another reaction video to my cringy videos. I know this one's going to be difficult. Boy, this ain't getting no easier, you know. Let's get into it. So this one here, I'm talking about people who consider themselves to be posh when really they're just working class people that come into a bit of money and that. Let's get into it. People in Loughton, this is for you. Now, Loughton is in Essex. And it's on the outskirts of East London, borders areas like Woodford, Buckhurst Hill and Epping Forest. Now to me, it's a nice area and they have some really nice houses equally. This video isn't for the people who live in those really nice houses. This video is for the people who come from outside of Loughton and they congregate outside of coffee shops like Cafe Nero and they sit outside restaurants drinking tea all day. Oh man. It's, it's difficult, you know. Difficult. Like, what man's saying is true, but it's... Anyway. Now, to me, Loughton is not a middle-class area. It's too mainstream for that. A middle-class area is an area like Whetstone, Notting Hill, or Muswell Hill. I believe the people who've come from outside of Loughton, who congregate outside these coffee shops, have brought the area down. I believe the people who have come from outside of the area. Man sound like... One of them, you know them Martin Luther King type of speeches and that? Jesus Christ. And I've had a few reports and experienced a slight snobbish air to these people. Fucking now, to me, no. they have brought the area down because they are not upper class as what they think they are. They are what I regard as working class posh. It's people who are working class, but who have come into a bit of money through business or however, you know, they've come into a bit of money. And now they think they have moved up a level on the totem pole. And it doesn't really go that way. It is possible to migrate from working class to middle class. That is possible. But not just because you've bought a nice car and now you've got a bit of money. That doesn't make you middle class. This is so difficult to listen to. Every word, every syllable that man ushers. It's like someone scratching on a chalkboard to blood clot. Like you lot's probably laughing and that. Man's getting hot right now. You understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> hey. Alright, I had to interrupt the recording because I'm pussy out at the back. Wanted to start shooting fireworks and that sort. Anyway. You know you're from a working class background if you have a name like Chelsea, Mason, or Ashley. Those are like typical working class names. If you're from the middle class background, you probably have a name like Matilda, India, or Pippa. You probably went to private school, you probably played an instrument, and you probably are well spoken. Middle class people don't come out with statements like, do you know what I mean? Listen, <laughs> you can buy a nice car and you can buy a nice house, but you cannot buy class. Yeah, that's the realest truth though. Just because you come into money it doesn't make you middle class or you get me upper class or whatever. Your children, yeah, they could become middle class and that because you're rich. But just because you're working class and you make money and you become rich, even if you become a millionaire, it doesn't make you middle class. Class is about your upbringing, how you speak, where did you go to school, what type of school did you go to, what type of university did you go to, did you go to London Met or London South Bank, or did you go to UCL, did you go to King's College, did you go to Imperial did you play an instrument when you was a kid? Or did you go to boxing class? Did you practice karate? Or was you playing tennis? How did your parents meet? Did they meet on the streets? Or did they meet in university? Now, a lot of people, they get come into a bit of money and that, and they think they're now posh or middle class or upper class and that. No. No, 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 no. Middle class and upper class is about your upbringing. Don't get it twisted. There's a lot of people who are from the middle class background who are now broke. But they will still forever fall into the middle class background in terms of their upbringing. So anyway, I'm going to get on to the next one in a sec. 
All right, in this video, I'm explaining my type of woman. So early days, early stage of JYS TV. I mean, in like February coming up, that would be probably the make it'll make this video about four years old, isn't it? So let's get into this one. This is this is my type of my perfect type of woman. Or so I thought at the time anyway. Right, a lot of girls ask me what's your type, and I never tell girls my type, but I may as well just spill the beans now. Yeah. Real talk though, never tell a girl your type. She don't need to know, keep her guessing fam. Never tell a girl your type, because what she will try and be is your type if she really likes you and that. So what she will do, she won't be her authentic self. Me, I never ask a girl her type. I don't give a fuck. I am the way I am. I'm not changing who I am as a person. So why do I give a fuck what a girl's type is? It's either you like me or you don't. If you poll a hundred women, you know, 60 of them could say I'm nice, 60 of them could say I, they like me, and then 40, 40 of them won't like me. Some of them will think I'm good looking, most of them will think I'm good looking, some of them will think, nah, he's not good looking. Some of the girl them be like, yeah, he's good looking, but I don't like his personality. Some of the girl them might say, oh, you know, I like his personality, but he's not good looking enough. So there's no point trying to ask a girl what her type is and try and be her type. Like, you're not going to be your authentic self and you're coming across like a tryhard, which is a turn off to the girl. So to me, my type of girl is what I call a bad chick. Now it doesn't mean she holds guns for some drug kingpin, okay? It just means she's an independent woman who doesn't necessarily have to live on her own. She may live with family or relatives, but she can stand on her own two feet. She's probably there for financial reasons so that when the right guy comes along, they can move in together and probably buy their own property. But at the drop of a hat, she can move out and live on her own and still feel comfortable. She doesn't glorify being single or have this kind of stupid mentality like Beyonce where you know, they diss men and they say, oh, being single is cool and stuff. A lot of those women that pretend that being single is cool are the ones that are most unhappy. So don't, let, don't listen to them and don't let them fool you neither. 110%. Them women that say, ah, oh, strong, independent woman. You know, when someone talks about something and that, it's just... It, Whatever they say, so fix up, for example, if a girl says, oh, I'm a strong, independent woman. If she really was a strong, independent woman, do you think she'll need to talk about it? If she really was happy and content being single, do you think she'll need to go and talk about it unless someone asks them? These girls that post up this shit on their WhatsApp uh, status or their WhatsApp profile picture on Instagram, oh, I love yourself or all this bullshit, they're the ones that are the most unhappy. Strong, independent, happy, free woman. Blood, to me, that's cold for I'm miserable, but I'm putting on a fucking front. The people that don't have money are the people that like to show people that they've got money. The brokest people in the world wear the nicest clothes. The reason why they want to show people that they got money, because they ain't. The reason why they feel like they're obs that they need to drive a Mercedes and that is to show the world that they got money, quote unquote, because they know deep down they're broke. Deep down, they're struggling for bills. There's people right now, they work and they can't take a day off work. Let's say, for example, they're a construction worker or something like that, or they're self-employed. They can't take a day off work because their outgoings is so mad. But she's just waiting for the right guy to come along and she's content with being single for the time being. Now, she definitely has to have a backbone. I don't care how nice the girl's face is or how nice the girl's body is. If she doesn't have a backbone and she's weak and she's fragile, to me, that's very unattractive and I don't like women like that. I like to have a girl where, you know, I'm not gonna punk her, you're not gonna punk her, her boss is not gonna punk her and her work colleagues can't punk her. She don't take no verbal or no physical disrespect whatsoever. If it comes down to it, she will take off her earrings. Hopefully it doesn't turn out like one of those girls um, from World Star Hip Hop, but she'll take off her earrings and she'll, have, she'll fight in the street to defend herself. She's not going to let no one take advantage of her. Now, I was in the situation before where I was in altercation with a guy and his girlfriend was there and my ex-girlfriend was there and she was ready to back me. Guys, we need that kind of that Bonnie and Clyde type of thing, like a ride or die chick, right? So she was that type of girl and I rated her for that. Now, she definitely has to have financial sense, you know? She can't 
be in debt or have bailiffs turn up at the door or you know the loan sharks are after her i don't really understand why people were in debt but that's probably a different video anyway but she can't have masses of credit card debt or any foolishness like that i, I find that a turn off as well you know she needs to be able to handle her finances correctly she has to have the type of mentality you know if she's gonna fall behind on the rent then the sky or the virgin media has to go right so she has to be able to make those sacrifices yeah it's a big turn off for me if a girl is in some mad financial debt and she don't have much money to her name i don't want to be around anyone who is struggling for, for money i don't want to hear about your problems and that because me as a man i feel like it's my duty to fix the girl's problems if she's close enough to me so i don't want no one i've never been in no financial debt so therefore i don't want to be around someone who's struggling for bills and in some mad financial debt if it's like a family member or something, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm not, I'm not around you like that. So if you're in financial debt, I don't really give a damn. But if this is a girl that I'm with, I don't want no girl. I mean, it'll get on my, she definitely has to. It'll get on my nerves if a girl is in financial debt talking about they only got £100 to their name or you get me or they need to borrow money from people and that. Blood. No girl can come to me for me to borrow their money, blood. To be a head turner. She doesn't have to look like Megan Good or Laurie Harvey or Lauren London. But when you turn up in the restaurant with a couple men are gonna be like, yo, see the thing over there, okay? So she has to be kind of like a head turner. She has to dress classy and elegant, but still sexy at the same time, but not trashy or anything. Like certain celebrities we know, Cardi B, no disrespect, okay? But she has to dress classy and elegant. She has to be well spoken and intelligent she doesn't necessarily have to have a degree but she needs to be able to conduct herself in an intelligent way and speak well and present herself really well and the last and final thing is she definitely has to have drive she has to be have she has to have that type of mentality where she wants to take on the world with or without jay wise that's the type of girl that i look for right now to be honest i haven't really found that type of girl but when i do I'll make her something, right? Okay, so if you like the video, subscribe. If you don't like the video, change the station. Right. Uh, let me just listen to that last part again. One sec. But still sexy at the same time, but not trashy or anything. Like certain celebrities we know. Cardi B, no disrespect. Okay, but she has to dress classy and elegant. She has to be well spoken and intelligent. She does. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't think it would be much of a turn on for me if if I was chatting to a gal and you get me. She she talking the same way I talk. You know, man, don't want no girl from the streets. So I mean, I like a girl if she's street smart, but I don't want a girl who's really from the streets and she could tell me all these mad stories in that situation she's been in and that now. Nah. Let the storytelling be for, for me to do, yeah? She doesn't necessarily have to have a degree, but she needs to be able to conduct herself in an intelligent way and speak well and present herself really well. And the last and final thing is she definitely has to have drive. She has to, be, have, she has, to have that type of mentality where she wants to take on the world, with or without Jay White. Yeah, I mean, the drive thing... She doesn't need to have to try and take on the world or nothing like that, but have a little bit of drive to want to, don't just be content with just working a job. Like, just want to pursue something, even if it's, oh, I want to make a YouTube channel and, you know what I mean, innit? Yeah, don't just be content with just being another number at your workplace and that. I believe everyone's got a skill and a talent and I believe everyone is blessed with some skill and talent. If it's, whether it's cooking, whatever, whether you're good on camera and that, you should exercise your skill and your talent and use that to make money. Don't just be another fucking worker that's just going to born, live and die. Uh, work until you're 75 years old and get your stupid pension and shit and then complain that the government's not helping nothing, uh, not, not helping the, the old people and they're going to freeze in the winter and that. So, yeah, just, a li just some, a little bit of drive. I don't want no one who's just completely content with just working and being a number. But that's it for this one. All right, last but not least. So this one's about trust issues. And a lot of people, they've been scarred in their past, so they do have issues with trusting new people. 
there's a, a technical word for it. I can't remember. It's some long word beginning with a P, like pisanthrom. I ain't even gonna attempt to fucking pronounce this word. But yeah, this one's about people having trust issues because they've been hurt and damaged and scarred by people in the past and that. So, you know, if someone's done you dirty in the past, just learn from it. But you get me. You're gonna have to move on. You're gonna have to start learning to trust people again, like. You know, trust new people. You can't allow the person beforehand to affect your decision making or whatever in here. So just learn from past events and that, but you've got to move on because if you're scared to, especially if a woman, if you're scared to invest in a man or whatever, you're never going to make that jump. So what's going to happen? So because some guy has broke your heart back when you was 20 or 21, you're never going to have kids because you don't trust another man to, to let him into your life and that. So I don't know if I made this video on the same day as the first video because it's in the same location in terms of continuity i mean i doubt it because i got some i don't know what was going on with that little piece of tissue in my top chest pocket there and i think man thought it was a fucking handkerchief in a blazer or something but yeah with that construction site so basically that was one of the best jobs i was on i was there on my own me i'm alone i love my own space and basically they was building a nursery from scratch so from the ground up and there was no wind. This is December, you know, freezing. This is in Finchley. So when I was living in Edmonton, I was driving from Edmonton to Finchley. Uh, this place was freezing inside. There was no windows. So it was ground floor, first and the second floor. No windows, blood. The wind on the first and second floor was mad because it was just, yeah, there was bare wind and that. It was just rushing through the, through the building and that. No windows. And it was mad, but it was a good look, look cool job still because I was just working on my own. so. Yeah, I think I was getting paid like £280 a day and I was there for like straight a straight 10 days just testing cables and that, not even doing no work really. Anyway, last but not least, people with trust issues, let's get into it. So I made a video about why women can't find good men and I received a comment on Instagram along the lines of what if a woman has found a man in the past and he seemed to be good and then turned out not to be? Is she a bad woman for not trusting any other men in the future? And obviously the answer is no, but you're not doing yourself any favors by not allowing anybody else in because of one bad experience in the past or 10, it doesn't matter. You have to keep on moving forwards. I'm not saying forget about the past, but I'm saying you have to look forward to the future because if you allow what happened in the past to affect your future, then you will never ever be able to have a successful relationship or be successful in anything. If I let's pull that back a second. In the past to affect your future, then you will never ever look how black my knuckles are. I mean, I was gonna say I don't know why my knuckles are so black, but it's probably not creaming, not moisturizing my hands, and and obviously. Man had bare fights and that. But my knuckles are so black that basically when you get nicked by the police, if you have any distinctive features about you, they will note it down. And they will link that to your description. So for example, if an individual is a bald-headed man with a tattoo of a dragon on his neck, they'll write down individual is bald. I mean that could change enough, but the tattoo on the neck, that's not really gonna change. So yeah, the individual has a tattoo on his neck and he has a cross on his left arm and that. Distinctive features. Do you know what my distinctive features was? The police put down on my distinctive features on my record as the man has got burn marks on his hands, you know. Blood, I swear to God, burn marks, you know. Fam, this ain't burn marks. Jesus Christ, blood. So I always remember that. But yeah, my monocles was dusty. Well, still are dusty, still are ashy and that. Don't make it give you a backhand, you know, you know about it. Be able to have a successful relationship or be successful in anything. If I had that mentality, I, what I allow in the past to dictate my future, I would have never have met my two girlfriends because I didn't meet these women through a friend of a friend. I had to pluck up the courage and approach them and get their numbers. Now, if I had the mentality where, oh, because I was rejected by some girl the day before, I'm not going to approach this girl, it would have never have happened. I would have never have made that move and got their number. So you cannot allow your past to dictate your future. You just take it as a learning curve and try your best to not allow it to happen again.
okay? So it's your choice. It's up to you. You can close your heart off from the rest of the world and all the men in the world, or you can leave your heart open but have your defenses up and hope for the best. You either you want to be single or you want to find a relationship. It's your choice. Yeah, for real though. Although a man don't like the output, the, the message there, that, that it's, it's a jeb still. So yeah, you can't allow your past situations that to dictate your future. Just got to move on. So man, if you're out here drawing gal, moving to girls on the road, fam, keep moving to girls on the road, fam. Don't just think, oh, you know, the last few rejections and that, it's never going to work. Because like I said, um, yeah, I've got two girlfriends out of it. But at the same time, don't be going out of your way to run around, run on the streets and, and draw a girl car. It don't really work that way, especially nowadays as well. So but anyway, that's it for today. Cringy videos over. Let me know if you like, if you want to see some more videos and that. I've got plenty of cringy videos to react to in here. So let me know. Stay where it's done though.